hi and hello everyone what we will see next is what are called as priority queues right so you know like uh, this kind of systems uh, occur very frequently or very often you would see in real life systems right so this is also models which have been studied long back what we are going to see is that we are going to see this queue in the Markovian framework though it might be uh, you know sometimes easier to get the required performance measures uh, using a more general approach but you know we will be viewing it from the Markovian perspective. Recall that what we have considered so far are all birthed queuing systems and Markovian queuing systems but they all have queue discipline as first come first serve or first in first out models right. So, the customers were selected for service on a first come first serve basis or first in first out basis right. But there do exist as you know alternative queuing disciplines which include last come first serve like in an inventory system or selection in random order or priority etc. But we may not see all but what we are going to look at is this particular queue discipline is what we are going to look at it ok. So, in priority schemes when in priority queuing discipline when priority is being employed the higher priorities are selected for service ahead of those with lower priorities ok. This is done in two ways one is with preemption and without preemption and what is that? So, in a preemptive case in a preempt the customer with a higher priority gets into either gets into service immediately on arrival if is no customers are there or if a lower priority customer is getting service ok. If the uh, customer who is currently getting service is of the same priority or higher priority obviously he will get into queue. He will interrupt any service that is ongoing for any lower priority customer to start his or her service is what the preemptive case because he preempts or interrupts the service of any lower priority customer that might be ongoing right to start his service otherwise he will get into the queue ok. Now depending upon what happens to the customer whose service has been interrupted in the middle by a higher priority customer this could further be you know divided into two case one is called preemptive resume. In this particular case the service can be resumed from the point of interruption right. So, that is one case or it can be started afresh right. So, you know you could have things like you know uh, situations in both may be possible here because it is some sort of paperwork kind of thing that is being done as a service then wherever you stopped probably you know you will start from there for the lower priority customer that is one way. If it is something which requires some startup things uh, you know and then say for example you know if you are looking at some kind of uh, heating processes involved then you have to start afresh because the already uh, done one is not of no use kind of thing right. So, that could be preemptive non resume. So, in general this could be of of course, you could think of more general uh, situations as well. This is preemptive case, preemptive case means he preempts any ongoing service of a lower priority customer that is a case. In non preemptive case the higher priority customer goes into the queue, but you know either if, if you have a system where you know separate queues are there of course, he will join the queue of the appropriate one. But for the system as a whole we might consider this a single queue, but then where he will move he will move ahead of any lower priority customer right, but he will be behind any higher priority customer are of the same level priority the ones who arrived before him will be ahead of him right. So, that is how you know thing within that priority of course, they may follow an FCF, FCFS basis in that case right. So, even if there is a lower priority uh, customer is getting service he is, will not 
preempt the ongoing service. So, he is not going to disrupt any ongoing service that is being given to a lower priority customer. He will just wait and then, but he will move ahead of any of those lower priority customers in the queue when selection for service is coming, right. But must wait for any customer, whoever is there, whether higher or lower, currently ongoing service, he is not going to interrupt. That is what we said, irrespective of priority, any customer service to complete the service, he will wait. So, that is the non preemptive case, okay. And it is convention to use the lower numbers to denote the higher priorities. So, you may use 1 for the highest priority and 2 second highest, 3 the third highest and so on. In case of 2 priority like we might use simply 1 and 2 where this 1 could also be referred as higher priorities and 2 would be referred to as lower priorities, higher and lower since there are only 2. So, you could also call this for convenience that you have seen. Now, this priority queues because of this priority discipline that you have here are in general difficult to analyze compared to the non-priority case. But if you recall that for the MM and Q for example and some other related models or anywhere, the derivation of the steady state system size probabilities did not depend on the Q discipline. We pointed out this while discussing MM1 also and at which point the Q discipline comes into picture also we have discussed at that point of time. So, that is what you know you may recall. And it can be shown that indeed like you know it can be shown that the as long as the selection of customers for service is independent of the relative size of the service time, PNs would be independent of the Q discipline. What does that mean? That would mean that for example, if you are looking at a situation where the shorter service time requirements are taken up first for service. So, those, those kind of things is not happening. That is the case where the selection de would depend on the relative size of the service time, you know, shortest service time first. Right? There are, this is the one queuing discipline that is existing. And we may not see that, but of course, that is one such discipline. So, in such case, this is not the case. As long as such situations are not there, the selection of customers for service is independent of the relative size of the service time then PNs are independent of the Q discipline. When as long as this is true, you know that the Little's formula remains unchanged and hence the average number in the system and hence the average waiting time, right. But we know there will be changes in the waiting time distribution. Again, you know, you may recall our MM1 analysis where we said that you know the first come first serve is what we are assuming while deriving the waiting time distributions. If not what would happen you can imagine in that situation, okay. So, so that is that is what uh, you can see and we can now make a claim which says that waiting times are stochastically smallest under FCFS with all other things being equal. And introduction of any scheme of priorities which does not depend on the service time makes the higher order moments worse than un what was it under the FCFS discipline. That is what uh, we mean. So, higher order moments under this is stochastically smaller, right. And it will be better under FCFS scheme, that is what you know we are meaning, which means that uh, you know you will have a scenario where the FCFS scheme produces a lower variance for uh, the waiting types under FCFS scheme than any other scheme, okay. And what does that lower variance would mean? As you know for any data mean and variance are important, mean gives the what is the center point of the data and the spread or the dispersion is given by the variance. Now, variance smaller means the, the points are more cluster, uh, closely clustered around the mean, right. That is the meaning of lower variance. So, in this case that there is a greater equality among the waiting times of various customers. 
that's what it would mean because any customer that you pick it up you know it will be they'll have more closer waiting time durations you know there is no undue wait so in that case uh, this could also be lower variance can also be associated with uh, in some sense the fairness of the system right because it is fair to everyone so that you know almost everyone gets almost equal waiting time rather than very someone getting 5 time units someone getting 20 time units and if you someone getting 10 units someone getting 13 units so this is which is more reasonable is what then you are, you are thinking so this is what is you can think of this or you can view it as if it is a more fair scheme the FCFS scheme than the other scheme right so that is the implication when you look at uh, uh, variance as a measure of fairness in a way so the lower variance would give you more fairer wait, waiting times for all the customers. Now, this claim is very difficult to prove at this point with all the materials that we have at hand or even we are going to see later on also including that. So, you will need because you need to know what do you mean by random variables being stochastically smaller and so on and so many other results connected with that. But we can get an idea about how why this is true or how this is true right you know if it was just taking an illustration okay so let us look at this diagram that we have put here which depicts the arrivals and departures under the fcfs scheme and the y axis denotes the number in the system and this is the timeline and at time 0 it start with 0 and at time 2 which is t1 equal to 2 the first customer arrives the orange ones are dep depicting the arrivals and the blue ones blue arrows would depict the departures the customer numbers with different colored are boxed here uh, which is corresponding to the arrivals and their departures by right and the time at which the events are happening is basically denoted written here down the line okay suppose our customer 1 comes at time 1 at which point the system size becomes 1 okay and his service started and then his service will be continuing and at this point t2 equal to 6 the second customer comes but the customer is getting served here so the system size becomes 2 and then at a time t3 equal to 12 the first customer finishes his service so the second customer gets into service and the system size becomes 1 and at a time 14 then third customer comes so system size becomes 2 but the second customer is getting served here and this t5 18 the fourth customer also comes in but the second customer is still in service uh, so system size becomes 3 here and at time 20 the second customer leaves so the system size becomes 2 okay now there are two customers but since FCFS, the third customer is picked up for the service and his service is continued from 20 up to 24 and at this point the third customer service ends and then system size becomes 1 and his service starts at 24 and ends at 28 so the system becomes 0 and so on. So, this is a typical sample path right what we call it as sample path for the system size in a single server system right. Now, under FCFS now what are the waiting times if you think waiting times in the system that is what we are looking at it. First customer arrived at, at, at this point which is 2 and he left at this point 12 so his waiting time is 10. Second customer it is 6 and 20 it is 14. Third customer it is 14 and 24 it is 10 and the fourth customer is 18 and 28 it is 10. So, the mean is 11 and the unbiased variance which means the sample variance right unbiased sample variance is 4 here right that is what you can compute it under FCFS. Now, if you look at what is happening under the last come first serve discipline suppose if this is the discipline it is very easier to see. Of course, first two customers behavior would not change, but at the end at this point when two customers are there right when the two customers are there the last come first serve discipline if you are employing then the fourth customer is picked up for the service 
and the third service time i mean irrespective of the customer you have picked the fourth customer but he will again have four units so the his service will end here right his service will end here and this is the service duration of the fourth one so basically what you will have here instead of three you will have four and in this place four he will have three so the fourth customer would exist he exit here and the third customer would exit the system here these things would remain the same only in these two points these two would get interchanged and that would change right if the fourth customer is here he arrived at 18 and if he leaves at 24 his waiting time is 6 third customer he would arrive at 14 and he would go at 28 so his waiting time is in the this system was 14 so these are the four waiting times of these four customers which still has mean as 11 it's not going to change that but the variance now if you look at it it is 14.67 as compared to 4 which is much larger than the fcfs scheme so variance is higher under fcfs scheme and this is what the climb typically is what what we made it's basically the climb is in terms of the distributions you are talking about but that would imply that it will have higher higher order moments worse and uh, in this uh, any LCFS or priority schemes then it was under FCFS that is what it would mean and that means that it becomes in some sort of unfairness system. But you know there is always a question about fairness in the system and the Q discipline this is always in conflicting uh, nature. So, if you want to introduce this then basically you are compromising on the fairness for of all customers but if it has to be for certain reason that if you have to create a system where this particular group has to be given priority you have to live with that unfairness in that situation right that is what you know it will turn out to be. Furthermore in further extension of the ideas that we are already seeing it right. So, one can also show that there are see that the remaining total service or work required for a single server at any point during an arbitrary busy period is independent of the order of service meaning that any priority that you introduced or last come first sir you introduce anything this will be independent the work required for a single server at any point of time this will be independent as long as what we say the system is conservative what do we mean it means that no system needs are created or destroyed within system right whatever it comes for example there is no reneging happens in the middle of the service so that means the system need is getting destroyed for the remaining period and the one customer also is lost now how do you count whether this is served or not served is also another question right but his needs are you know destroyed right so this destroyed are uh, you know you might uh, look at the case where uh, again when the, in the priority when the preemption happens right what happens to the the preempted service which starts all over then again you know some portion which server has already put in that is getting destroyed that service needs have been destroyed right and when you start afresh then you are creating additional need as well right right uh, and also like when there are customer when there are customer you are not forcing the service to be a server server to be idle is not the situation. So, if you do not have any such behavior then that system is what is generally to called as a conservative systems. So, in such conservative systems you know the workload for the server is independent of any order of service. So, that is also one can C okay. Now, what we do next is we will consider start with a priority queuing system but of course, we will as I said that this is a Markovian system that we are thinking about and in that framework we are going to look at that. So, customers would arrive as a Poisson process to a single exponential channel. You can think of and this is the non preemptive priority system with two classes is what we are going to consider. So, you can think of as if it is a typical MM1 system only right, but with certain changes. The changes are a customer upon his arrival 
is assigned one of the two priority classes okay arbitrarily you can think that you know it is in independent of everything else that you know any particular uh, customer can be assigned with certain probability class 1 and certain probability class 2 you think it that way that would be equivalent to then the first or higher priority customers arrive as a poisson process with rate lambda 1 and the lower priority customers arrive as poisson process with rate lambda 2 the total arrival rate would be lambda so that is the poisson process with arrival uh, with rate lambda with arrival rate lambda which will be then equal to lambda 1 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and you know the probability of that assignment if you are looking at this then it will be lambda 1 by lambda is the corresponding probability you can think okay and we also assume that there is no preemption takes place so this is non preemptive priority system so there are two priority classes higher priority one arrives at the rate lambda 1 the lower priority arrives at the rate lambda 2 now such a system it can be modeled with the assumption of exponential service and the arrival process being Poisson, right? The arrival could be with certain probability at any given point of time. The arrival could be higher priority, and with uh, the remaining probability, the arrival could be of the lower priority. Okay, and every other assumptions connected with uh, such a Markovian system is in place. Then the system can be modeled by a continuous time Markov chain with state space as this. Okay, so zero we denote it that system is empty there is nothing on that and a triplet to denote m n r and what is this m this m denotes the number of priority one customers or higher priority customers this n is number of lower priority customers and r is the priority of the customer that is undergoing service the current time is what is denoted by r so this m and n both cannot be zero if both are zero then it boils down to this particular state and there is no customer nothing in the priority so that's why that is denoted as separate state this m and n both cannot be equal to zero so that is what you know we write it as maximum of this m and n is strictly greater than zero so at, or at least one Whereas m and n can take 0, 1, 2 and so on and r is either 1 or 2 depending upon whether the customer who is currently in service is priority 1 or priority 2 okay. and the corresponding steady state probabilities with uh, yeah, both m and, uh, m and n not both being 0 at the same time are denoted by p suffix m n r. So, the first suffix is number of priority 1 customers the second suffix is number of priority 2 customers and r is the customer is in service is of priority r where r is either 1 or 2 and p naught is the system being empty and l l q w q w with superscript within bracket i would denote the corresponding measures for the corresponding priority class if it is 1 it is higher priority if i is equal to 2 then it is for the lower priority in this two priority cases right so this is a general setup here right now we'll assume we'll consider three models and we'll compare to make certain inferences so the model a would be equal service rates meaning that both the class demand an equal service need from the server that is the, the service rate service distribution is exponential we already mentioned right but the service rate or the mean service time that is required to serve either priority 1 or priority 2 they are equal to the rate mu we call it okay then we define rho 1 equal to lambda 1 by mu and rho 2 as lambda 2 by mu and rho as you know row 1 plus row 2 which is again lambda 1 plus lambda 2 by mu and that is lambda by mu and we will assume that row less than 1 for the stability of the system for the underlying Markov chain to be positive recurrent and so on, right. So, all these lambda lambda 1 lambda 2 mu of course we assume to be strictly greater than 0 
So, rho less than 1 is what is the stability condition that is required for this steady state to exist. Okay. Now, once we you know have this one right as the state space, now we can write the balance equations of uh, corresponding to the different states in the state space. right? The generic ones are what we are calling it as equation A and equation B which correspond to a general state of m strictly greater than or equal to 1 and n is greater than or equal to 2 and m greater than or equal to 2, n greater than or equal to 1. This is this is the general one. Okay. That means m n with respect to 2 and m n with respect to 1 mean the current service currently being rendered to which priority customer is what denoted by this third subscript as we already denoted. So, this is the equation and this is the once we have this equation which is the general one then one has to look at the boundary cases say for example, m n, n is greater than or equal to 2. So, what will happen if n is equal to 1 is what will come here right m m 1 2 which can be right uh, you know deduced from this by looking at the boundary this is 1 n 1 ok at, at 0 n 2 and uh, you know there will be some changes will be there you cannot directly you know, deduce from here right remember we will come to this how do we get to this but once you know this then certain things like you can deduce from here looking as a boundary, but in boundary the behavior might be slightly different and you have to account for it. Say for example, this 1 n 1, 0 n 2, m 0 1. So, these are all 0 1 and this is specific to these particular states 0 1 2. There is one customer in the service and which is a priority 2 and there is one customer in the service which is a priority 1 in that case like how this behaves. Okay. So, you need to carefully look at and write down these portions, but once you understand the genesis by looking at these two, what are the possibilities that can lead to this particular state. So, this is the general principle in the uh, balance equation writing with respect to any Markovian model. So, we are getting practiced with many such things. right? So, this is m and 2. Suppose if I look at this equation A first, okay, what we are writing is this one, okay, what we are writing is uh, this one. Okay. So, now look at the equation A case which is m n 2. This we are looking at, so we are depicting only for the state m n 2, uh, what are the possibilities, what are the rates or in which way the process or the CTMC can move out of the states or from where it can come into the states to write down the balance equation. Right. Now, what might have come? Remember this m and n, the condition under which m is at least 1, n is at least 2 is what is, that is what we are writing it generically. Okay. Now, what can happen while it, while it is in this particular state? Okay. An arrival can happen which is of priority 1, an arrival can happen which is of priority 2, right? Or currently undergoing service is of priority 2, so a yes, service completion can happen. Okay. These are the three possibilities that it can happen, right? Now, with what are the rates for these three possibilities and to which state the process will move at the end of that transition is what you have to look at it, right? So, currently m and 2 with a rate lambda 1 and arrival of priority 1 customer, this will move to state m plus 1 n 2, right? So, when you say m and 2, this one customer from this n is in service, that is what you have to remember, right? With an arrival will take it to m plus 1 n 2 or if there is an arrival of the priority 2 customer that can happen with rate lambda 2, this can make go to m n plus 1 2 going out to m n plus 1 2 it can go or if the service completion happens, right? if the service completion happens with uh, in, in this case, right? 
so current customer is being served is of priority two is a non preemptive so that's why you know this whenever this arrival happens it just pushes to m plus 1 n 2 it's non preemptive if it is preemptive of course this will remain in n and then uh, this will become one that kind of thing can happen right that's what you have to remember okay now m and 2 if the service completion happens then this the na priority two customers would be reduced but since there is at least one priority one customer in service so that will get into the service so the state movement would be with rate mu this will be m n minus 1 and 1 okay so this uh, green color one i have depicted it for uh, the states with uh, the third suffix as 2 and this blue colored one is with the third suffix being 1 which means based upon the current service and if you can see you see that it's 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 impossible to depict the whole thing because this is in three dimension you have to depict okay so that's it's impossible to do that so that's why we are specific cases we are looking at so the total rate of outgoing transitions is basically lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus mu and that's precisely what we are writing it here lambda 1 plus lambda is basically lambda 1 plus lambda 2 right lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus mu from the state m n 2 it's clear right now from which way it can come to state this state m n 2 it could have been m n minus 1 2 and with an arrival of lambda 2 arrival rate of lambda 2 which is arrival of a prior, lower priority customer it can move to m n 2 right or it was in state m minus 1 n 2 and with an arrival of priority 1 customer with an arrival of higher priority customer this can move to m n 2 right these are the two only two possibilities through any service completion it cannot come to this when m is strictly greater than or equal to 1 right that's what is would happen so basically lambda 1 corresponding way from this state and lambda 2 from this state is can only way it can come to state m and 2 so that shows how we have written this particular equation right to try to understand this fine this is about the the first equation which is equation a now let us look at equation b right in which way this can go out it will have a almost similar way right so in m n 1 is what we are looking at the state from this an arrival of priority 1 would make it to m plus 1 n 1 and you know arrival of sec priority 2 would make it to m n plus 1 1 and a service completion of this right would make it to m minus 1 n 1 because now since the m is at least in this particular case m is at least 2 so there is at least one more customer is there here so this will be at least one would be there so his service will start so it will be in the same priority customer same priority level because already there is at least one priority one customer is waiting so his service will start so basically from m n 1 with a service completion it will move to m minus 1 n 1 so the total rate of going out of the state is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus mu but where it is moving is what you need to understand right so that again lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus mu times pm n 1 that's clear now what is the in the flow into the state right the flow into the state it can be from m minus 1 n 1 and an arrival could happen of priority 1 with rate lambda 1 to make it come to the state m n 1 or it was m n minus 1 1 and an arrival of lower priority would make it to come to state m n 1 right r here we said that it goes out to something here this is what is coming in here that one it could have been in m n plus 1 2 right 
again n is at least greater than or equal to 1 m is at least greater than or equal to 2 case is what you are looking at it m n plus 1 2 and at the service completion of the pri lower priority customer it will move to m n 1 now the this one means that one of this m customer is what is getting service now right so from here it went to this you know row suppose if you think of this as you know two different layers one m n 1 is somewhere down and m n 2 is somewhere up then m n 2 to m n 1 this is what is coming down and this is what is coming down to this particular case here right so this is for the second equation which is equation b right you can understand lambda 1 m minus 1 n 1 and from m n minus 1 with rate lambda 2 r mu there are two mu's actually you have to look at here so one is this the other is this right now if there is m plus 1 n 1 right m plus 1 n 1 a service completion would again bring it back to m n 1 so there are two one one mu is from here the other mu is from here so there is mu from m plus 1 n 1 and m n plus 1 2 this will come to state m n 1 so that is what this equation is so understanding this is what is the essence of any markovian model that you know you will uh, see in any ctmc and more so in queuing that you have you have to write down this if you consider a markovian system it all boils down to writing down this balance equation this comes with practice only Right. It is not going to come in one or two models, but we are telling the principles in which uh, by which you know you can arrive at these equations. You just have to look at all possible possibilities that can happen when you are writing down the flow balance equations. The flow into the state and flow out of the state is what will give you this balance equation. Now, if you sum both sides, then the left side would be equal to the right side. So, the difference would be equal to 0 is what then you would see here. Similarly, the other ones, some of them can be easily written down as a, as a balanced, uh, as a boundary states. Some of them, even the boundary state, the behavior might be slightly different. So, you need to worry about it that, okay. For example, in this 0 and 2 case especially, when there is 0 priority 1 customer, if there is n here, it will not follow from here as such because there will be a mu here it will come because there is no customer of priority 1 available. So, it will start serving the priority 2 customer. So, that is why this term will come into the picture, right. So, so this, these are certain modifications which you will know, but you, you can work on the same principle to arrive at these equations, right. This is the balance equations and how we have obtained is what uh, you know we have uh, explained through these two diagrams. Now, by Little's law, which you apply to the server now, right. You can think, you can see that rho is the fraction of the time the server is busy or 1 minus rho is the fraction of the time the server is free and that would be equal to P naught which is equal to 1 minus rho, right. You can write that. Similarly, the fraction of time the server is busy with a priority R customer is rho R. So, that would mean summing over this p m n 1 with appropriate m n's to give get this rho 1, right. So, this m is equal to 1 to infinity of for all possible n's if you sum you will get rho 1 and with n is equal to 1 to infinity with all possible m's if you sum you over get this rho 2. So, from this p m 1 p m 2 if you get you will get you know this relationship this is true and this is also true and p naught is 1 minus rho which is 1 minus of rho 1 minus rho 2, 1 minus rho 1 minus rho 2 is what then you are getting here that is p naught here. Now, since here the exponential service time with the same rate is there for both the priority class classes, the system size steady state distribution for the number of customers if you think right, if you think n as the number of customers that can happen in many different ways depending upon how many number of priority 1 and priority 2 customers are there, but their sum should be equal to n, right. That is what you know you would see, right. If you sum these two, right, so if you sum these two for, for n greater than or equal to 1 only we are writing, right, because p naught is 1 minus given here. So, sum is 
has to be at least n that means if there are n minus m priority 1 there must be m priority 2 so total, the total sum is n where this m can range from 0 to n minus 1 and this could also happen in this way with respect to m and 2 m and 1 both you have to sum so this total sum if you take this particular possibilities then this p n would be given by this. So, this is another thing that you can also notice from. So, if I want this, if I compute this explicitly, then I can com compute this sum and this sum to get to this. But even otherwise, you know, one can easily see that this is what is going to happen. We know all these things that you know, if you have this, this will all be satisfying this, but obtaining this p m n 1 and p m n 2 or p m n r in general is very difficult here. Okay. So, what we will try to do is we will try to obtain certain expected value measures using generating functions which is what typically done in such complex models at least the expected value measures you can obtain it explicitly so that you can do the performance analysis of that. Okay. For which what we do we define because of this three dimensional nature of the process because basically this CTMC is of three dimension. And because of this three dimensional nature like you know we have to have more complex uh, generating functions, but because the third dimension is either 1 or 2, so you can slightly make it in two dimension in the following way. First you define p m 1 of z right. So, p m n 1 z to the power n is what you are looking at here to get this quantity which is basically for a fixed value of m and the current cost uh, and the third index which is being 1 you are denoting its generating function with respect to this n. Similarly, m 2 is same thing, but now with respect to 2 here this is p m 2. Now, plug it this p m 1 inside uh, put another index y to the power m for this index as well for m is equal to 1 to infinity and call this as h 1 of y z. Now, h 1 of 1 1 will give you rho 1 as per our this observation right as per this observation h 1 1 1 when you put both z and y as 1 it will give you rho 1 and h 2 is basically with respect to you know the priority 2 this is you can think of it something like a partial generating function with respect to the you know priority 1 customer in service corresponding to all those states. This is corresponding to priority 2 customer in service corresponding to all those states okay, if you expand it in that form. So, h 2 of 1 will be equal to rho 2 and this, this is what will give you my h 2 of y z. Now, if I sum these two along with p naught I am going to get the full generating function which is the joint generating function for the two classes regardless of which type is in service. right? This is partial generating function depending upon which type is in service. So, this is a full generating function if you write it explicitly this is what you are going to get here right. This is what remember like m is equal to 0 to infinity n is equal to 1 to infinity here m is 1 to infinity n is equal to so all these things you know this indexes you need to little bit carefully write down that is all. So, then you will get this you will get these these this is an alternative way of writing down for some time to be helpful to do that ok. So, this is what you get as the joint generating function you have this partial generating function you have like in a the first step generating function of in one dimensional case. Now, note that when you put uh, both y is equal to z here this will boils down to generating function of an mm and q and because what does it mean that no priority distinction is being made right. So, you can observe from here there is no priority distinction is being made. So, your h y y will be p naught by 1 minus rho y with h 1 1 equal to 1 that is one observation you can make. And also if I take this full generating function differentiate with respect to y alone and substitute and evaluate it the derivative this partial derivative at y is equal to z equal to 1 what you will going to end up with is l 1 ok which will be equal to l q of 1 plus rho 1 right and plus rho 1 right and this is equal to lambda 1 times w 1. So, from once you obtain this quantity then you can obtain these quantities and w q as well from l q using the Little's law. 
Similarly, if I differentiate this generative function partially with respect to z and evaluate it at y is equal to z equal to 1, I will get L2 and from which I can get the other performance measures. So, basically since we are interested in these 4 performance measures that is what would be our interest as well. Now, how do we get that? You know you have to go back to the balance equation here, you know you you know multiply. So, this whole this each equation each equation with respect to you know y to the power m z to the power n with appropriate uh, m and n here and sum everything to arrive at this expression for the h1 and this expression for the h2 partially if you look at it okay that's this is a you know task that you, know, you need to uh, execute to see that exactly you arrive at this expression by the appropriate powers of y and z and summing over that you will end up with these two equations. But now if I look at these two equations there are three unknown things which are there here one is p11 z, p02 z and p0 right in both the equations you have this. So, if you want to determine this little bit more sim completely so, we need the, if you want to know completely then you need the values of these 3, but you know you one can find a relationship between these 3 quantities as this by using the equations corresponding to P0 and 2, P0 and 2 that equation the equation corresponding to this uh, you can use by summing z to the power n from 2 to 2 onwards and then arrive at this expression here. Now, what we have done is P11 you have obtained in terms of P02 of z and P0. So, if you substitute this here P11 in place of P11 this expression uh, you can see you can get a simplified version for H1 and H2 which will be now in terms of P0 and P02x ok. So, which P0, P02x and once you know h1 and h2 and p0 if you have then you can get this hyz which is equal to this expression which is in terms of p02x and p0. So, there are two terms here one with p0 and certain coefficient of that the second is p02 with this coefficient here p02 of z generating function this is a quantity this generating function. Now, from this fact h11 equal to 1 we can obtain p02 of 1 as rho 2 by 1 plus rho 1 okay p02 1. Now, why you know we need the f? if you want to determine l1 by taking the partial derivative of this with respect to y and evaluate it at y is equal to z equal to 1 here the exact evaluation is not possible because it will be 0 by 0 form you will get. So, you will take it as a limit in the limit form. So, when you do that you will get an expression which would require not the complete functional form of p02 of z, but p02 of 1 only you need, but that p102 of 1 you can explicitly get using this condition and p0 anyway you know it is 1 minus rho. So, everything can be determined completely uh, to get this L1. Now, once you have this L1 right once you have this L1 or L2 whatever is the case. So, L1 suppose if you have now L2 you need to determine, but for which you, you make this uh, use of this observation that the total number of customers in the system is the same as an MM1 system. Since that is the case L1 plus L2 would be equal to the corresponding value for the number in the system of an MM1 q which is rho by 1 minus rho. So, using this one can obtain directly through the partial derivative of this genetic function, but it is much easier that you know use this relationship because you already know L1. So, L2 you can obtain it from this relationship as L2 equal to rho by 1 minus rho minus L1 and once you know L1 and L2 the other measures LQ and WQ and WI Ws right with respect to each of this priority classes can be obtained through this relationship that we have here. Now, we will not mention that result, but we are mentioning the final results for certain purpose of comparison. So, we will take LQ with respect to class 1 and class 2 and completely you know for LQ 
completely is rho square by 1 minus rho because that is what you are going to get for an MM1 model. Now, LQ1 is obtained to be this and LQ2 is obtained to be this from this relationship. Now, how do we obtain here? You know, you have to obtain from L1. To obtain L1, you have to differentiate this uh, uh, derivative, this genetic function with respect to y and evaluate it at z equal to y is equal to z equal to 1 as y n z tends to 1 in the limiting case. Then you will arrive at L1 and from there you get this. So, this is we are putting it in a boxed uh, environment because we want to refer to this at a later stage for some observation that we want to make or for some comparison that we want to make. Now, this portion is extra for those of you who are interested alone of course, otherwise do not bother about this portion that you know this is extra for interested you can, can refer to Miller 1981 work to see that the actual probabilities for priority 1 customers can be shown to be obtained as this ok that is uh, anyway extra you do not worry about that. Now, with this mean value results, we have obtained what? Not steady state probabilities, but certain mean value results. With this mean value results, we can make some observations here, which is of uh, important, though we do not have the complete distributions. Okay. The first part is that lower priority customers always wait on an average longer than the higher priority customers, right? intuitively, but it can also be shown to be right you ex take the expression of w q 2 which is equal to this which can be written as this form which can be written into this where this is w q 1. So, which is greater than or equal to this whenever rho is less than 1 because that is the condition for stability. But however, this is not always true w q 2 is strictly greater than w q 1, but l q 2 is not strictly greater than L q 1 meaning the waiting time for the average waiting time for the lower priority customers is longer, but the number in the system need not be so. Number in the system for the lower priority customers may not be longer than this particular case. You can show with certain, with certain parameter values picking lambda 1, lambda 2 and mu you can show that uh, you know this greater than L q 1 and this quantity is less than L q 1 both are possible. So, that is that is an exercise problem in the text, but of course, that is uh, one can make an observation here. Okay. Now, the second observation is that as rho tends to 1, your L q 2 tends to infinity and so does the all other quantities connected with the lower priority customer. Okay. However, as long as your lambda 1 by mu is less than 1 is held constant, right, L q 1 would approach a finite limit, meaning like you may think that you know how you are going to get the keep this as a constant because by adjusting the rate lambda because when this is can happen so that it can happen as rho tends to 1 can happen with lambda 2 tending to infinity in, in some sense that alone can happen or if mu happens then according lambda 1 get, need to be gets adjusted to keep this as a constant. In whichever way it is if this is held constant then this will approach a finite limit means that the first priority means go to infinity only when this is tends to 1. Okay. Now, what does it mean is that it is possible that the higher priority customers do not accumulate even when the overall system state does not exist, which means the overall system size is exploding. Even then, it is possible that you may you have a system where the higher priority customers do not accumulate, they exhibit in some sense a steady state behavior a stable behavior. Okay. Now, the presence of class 2 customers still creates delays for class 1 customers even though they have priority that is because of this non preemptiveness that is one can show that L q 1 when lambda equal to 0 is smaller than L q 1 when lambda strictly greater than 0. Okay. But as you know if it has a preemption if it is there then the priority one would be a sort of an MM1Q type it will behave because it will preempt any of this. Then the class 2 customers do not affect, but as long as the non preemptiveness is there, then the class 2 customers does affect class 2, class 1 customers uh, behavior or priority or the waiting times. Okay. So, the average number in the Q is the same as an MM1Q, similarly the unconditional average weight meaning the weighted 
weights waiting times of these two weighted by this lambda 1 by lambda and lambda 2 by lambda is is also same as an mm and q these are some observations that you can make with respect to this non preemptive priority queuing system with two classes of customers which is which is what we with equal rates which is what is model a that we have considered we have written down the uh, balance equations we have a uh, cannot solve completely it is very difficult. So, what we did is expected value measures that we have obtained which we have given it in the boxed one which we are going to refer back to in the later lecture uh, because of some comparison that we want to make. Okay. So, of course, we will end here and we will continue the same priority cues uh, further discussion on this model in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.